I am Tato Cat. Welcome to my channel. Today we are playing Cabin Fever. Last time Mallory was really sick. We made some weird goopy witch tea. Um, we found out there was a cure or a possible cure or vaccine for the illness. Um, she ran away. We went after her got her foot stuck in a bear trap and that's pretty much where we left off all right let's continue i immediately started cranking it hoping against hope that it would lead me to her again but as i entered the trees i stopped hesitating mallory's note said she was headed back to the city to check on her sister Most likely she'd taken the footpath through the woods, the path she'd taken to get here in the first place. I might be able to catch up with her if I followed, but it depended on how much of a head start she had. If I followed the old driveway instead, I'd eventually make it to the highway. It was a longer path, but a more straightforward one. And if I could manage to flag down a car and get a ride, then I might even reach the city before Mallory did. I had to pick quickly. Head for the highway. Continue through the trees. Um, well, we are injured. So. So I feel like our best option would be the highway because it's a easier terrain than us gimping through the trees. But I kind of have a feeling if we head to the highway, we'll get hit by a car. But you know, we'll find out. We didn't die when our foot got stuck in the bear trap, so... Why not? Both options seem so risky. I took my chances and started down the driveway towards the main road. Already I could barely walk on my injured foot. My shoe felt tight and wet and every step sent pain shooting through my soul. The light of the flashlight bobbed ahead of me, lighting up the potholes and stones for me to step around and over. It took longer than it should have, but soon I was at the turn where the driveway met the main road. With high mast lights towering over me, the road itself was desolate, of course. Few people traveled anymore. Still, as I staggered along the shoulder in the direction of the city, I kept cranking my flashlight, swinging it back and forth on the off chance someone, anyone, might come along and see me. The thought of Mallory kept me going. I walked for a long, long time. It felt like a ghost world. Please, is anyone out there? My voice held more despair than I'd even realized I was feeling. But then, as if my desperate voice had summoned it, a car appeared in the distance. I heard it before I saw it, and when I saw it, I started waving my arms again. You're supposed to stay away from people, my brain reminded me. Shut up! That's not important right now! Yeah, brain, suck it. The car was getting closer. Its headlights glaring. I tried to jump, but my foot hurt too much. Stop! Please! Stop! I need help! The car began to slow. I stumbled towards it. The window rolled down and the driver peered out and saw my bloody foot and gasped. Oh my god, what happened to you? <laughs> Is this Cassie's voice? I'm trying to get to the city. Please, I'm hurt and she's... I couldn't even say it. How could I explain? Get in, I'll take you to the hospital. Yay, and another achievement. I wanted to cry. I hobbled to the passenger door and climbed in. By car, the city rose up around us within minutes. As we moved through the dim pre-dawn streets, I looked out at the place I'd hoped never to return to. 
Yeah, clearly this place is scarier. It has evil dark fairies floating around. It looks so much more decrepit than I'd imagined. The buildings were totally overgrown. There were broken windows and crumbling bricks, and the roads were all cracked apart. Here and there, bits of keep your distance tape fluttered forgotten. The people who were left did not need to be reminded. There was a lot of vandalism too. We drove past one dusty looking grocery store which had three people lined up outside, each of them wearing heavy duty masks and spaced at least eight feet apart from one another. I couldn't imagine how tough it must have been on Mallory and her family living here, trying to stay safe and survive in a rundown dump like this. The hospital came into view pretty quickly. I thanked the driver profusely for the ride, hopping out of the car almost before it had even fully stopped. When I saw the med tent erected in the street outside the hospital, I almost couldn't believe my eyes. I'm going to toggle this UI. So this is what happens in the future. That seems extreme, but I get it. Central Hospital. Why does the hospital look so messed up? you think there'd be more people there. In the tent. I feel like this is an important thing because this number is so big and uh, it's written twice like compared to all like the other things you can read that are kind of like fading and stuff like this is like look at me I think I'm overthinking but just in case I'm going to remember this number let's see so Five five eight four eight four three two two. Okay. Is that a real area code? I should look it up, figure out what city we're in. It existed, just like the email Bolton said it would, but there was hardly anyone around. A medical worker decked out in PPE emerged from the tent, holding a clipboard and looking around. A man with a small child called out from several feet away. The worker began asking questions I couldn't hear. This is how they were saving the world, quietly and with eerie calm. Daring to hope, I looked around for Mallory. If by some miracle she made her way here, then maybe everything would actually be okay. I spotted another small group lingering nearby. I lurched towards them. I'm looking for a girl. Her name is Mallory. Her hair is long and white. She's wearing purple. I moved from person to person, pleading, but no one had an answer for me. All of a sudden, I heard a faint squeal of a megaphone, a voice cracking over the near empty street. If you are awaiting preventative care, we ask that you remain patient while we triage symptomatic individuals. If you are currently experiencing symptoms like fever, headache, fatigue, or dry coughing, or have recently been in close contact with someone who is, please proceed to the screening area for assessment. The medical worker was showing the man and child into the med tent now. I staggered over. Do you see a very sick girl dressed in purple? The medic looked at me startled. I'm sorry, no. Who is she? I'm sorry, I was caught off guard by another person. And have you been in close contact with this person? Maybe. If she's not here, can you help me find her? Because she's really sick and I need to find her and bring her here. If you've been in contact with an infected individual, then the most important thing right now is for you to get assessed and admitted for treatment. I think we're going to run away and be like, no, we must find her and ignore this person. You do understand how rapidly the virus proliferates. The sooner we can begin treatment, the better your chances will be. Please, follow me. But no, I have to- Please, 
Right now, you are potentially shedding the virus in a public space. You need to enter the med tent. I looked around at the near empty street. I wanted to keep arguing, but what could I say? The medic must have seen the pain and hopelessness on my face. I will try to find out about your friend. Now please, I need you to enter the med tent. <laughs> Accept treatment, insist on getting help for Mallory first. Mm. Mm. Um, she was really sick. I feel like if we if we do this, it's going to take too much time, and then something bad will happen to her. So yeah, let's be more headstrong and try to get to Mallory. I can't stop until I find her. Please, there's no one here, but she's somewhere. And if I can just find her and get her back here in time. That's a life saved. The medic looked kind of lost. I was already backing away, getting ready to start running again. If Mallory wasn't there, then she had to be at the planetarium, or at least on her way to it. Wait! Don't go yet. The medic disappeared inside the tent. A couple of people who had been waiting nearby moved closer, hovering. It was probably wrong of me to race ahead of them demanding the lone medic's attention, but honestly, whatever. It wasn't as though there were crowds and crowds of people waiting for aid. The only thing I cared about was Mallory. The medic re-emerged holding a bulky handset. Take this. It's a satellite phone. We have a few of them for contacting other med centers. As soon as you find your friend, call us. If we know where you are, we might be able to send help. <laughs> Sad panda. <laughs> A wave of gratitude washed over me as I took the sat phone. I definitely didn't have to be told twice. Time had never been more of the essence. Thank you. Thank you. I was already hurrying away, almost in disbelief at this blessing. I carried on down the street, calling Mallory's name, though everything seemed so deserted. There were a handful of people around who would turn at me puzzled. They avoided my path, and I avoided theirs. I reached back into my memory trying to get my bearings and figure out which way to go. The planetarium was closer to the river, I knew that. I started down the street in that direction. My head was spinning, and I couldn't feel my foot anymore, but I kept on going, leaving bloody shoe prints behind me. At least we won't get lost. Hope was the only thing keeping me going. I treaded over the rubble in the streets, passing broken hazard signs on empty storefronts, unable to stop myself from imagining the riots that must have taken place here years ago. When the top of the old planetarium building had come into view, I sprinted the rest of the way. I looked at the building surrounding that one, which was the apartment building where Mallory lived. I scanned all the windows and balconies in sight, looking for some sign of her. I turned in circles, searching every street corner and bus stop I could see. It was like a ghost town. I tipped my head back to call for Mallory. That's when I caught a sight of a purple figure on the rooftop overhead. Mallory! Mallory! Don't move! I'm coming! I didn't even know if she could hear me. I just hurried as fast as my body would let me, around the buildings to the fire escape. A dry, rattling feeling was building up in my chest. I could hardly breathe. I reached the top of the fire escape and hauled myself onto the roof where I was sure I had seen Mallory. I looked around for her and at the moment my body ceased all functions and I could actually feel my heart skip a beat. So where are we exactly? Cause this is a hotel. Hotel something I can't read what this letter is. Um, it's not an apartment building. These are apartment building. Well, this is an apartment building. This could be an apartment building. 
It is a very nice destroyed city, I have to say. Where was she? Mallory! A cool breeze blew past, and all I could do was stand there for a few moments processing everything that was happening. I'm... I'm here. I turned to find the source of that small, weak voice. There she was, the opposite edge of the rooftop. Her delicate frame backlit by the gentle rising sun, dark hollows hung under her eyes and in her cheeks. She trembled, barely able to hold herself upright. Why are you here? She didn't look at me as she spoke, and my throat felt like it was twisting shut. Your letter. I found it, and I... I couldn't just let you go. She listened and continued to gaze out on the cityscape, avoiding eye contact with me. You shouldn't be here. It's dangerous for you to be close to me. She was so out of breath. I approached her slowly, terrified that she would just float away. That doesn't matter to me now. I care about you too much. I... I love you, Mallory. Wow, we said it. It's been... like... four days. She turned her face, finally giving me a weak smile. You dummy! I love you too! That's why I had to leave! She swayed then, as though turning to look at me had made her dizzy, and her body dipped towards the ledge. I lunged, panicked, and grabbed Mallory's narrow arms. In one swift movement, I had pulled her onto myself, redirected the shift in weight to have her fall into my arms. Gently, I helped her lay down. Her cheeks were blood red, her skin like fire. She struggled to keep her eyes open. I don't have much time left. M maybe you're just a dream. No, Valerie, you don't understand. There's a treatment! There's a treatment, and it's right here in the city, and I love you! There's a cure? I nodded vigorously, fumbling the sat phone I'd shoved into my pocket. My sister wasn't home. D do you think maybe she managed to get the cure? My shoulders rounded as I fought back tears. Of course, Mallory wouldn't even think of herself. I'm going to get you help! I'm calling right now, and someone's gonna come! The phone was in my hands, my thumbs poised over the stiff, tactile buttons. The number had been printed on the med tent, but what was it? Ha ha ha! Yay! For realizing it was important. I deserve a cookie. Someone needs to give me a cookie. All the cookies for me. Five five eight four eight four three two two. Yes, that was it. Yay! Thank you, Brain. You're welcome. I thought as the ring started to go through. <laughs> You're welcome, replied my brain, as the more rings went through. I started to worry that no one would pick up, but then, finally, someone did. I didn't know if it was the same medic who gave me the sat phone, but either way, I immediately started riling off every detail I could about where we were and how to get here. Then I threw the phone down and wrapped my arms around Mallory. Someone's coming. Help is coming. All I could hope for now was that they would get here fast enough. It was selfish of me to stay with you. I should have known. No, no, don't start that. She paused, sputtering and coughing weakly. Then she tried to smile, but tears washed across her eyes instead. I'm so sorry. 
Oh no, was I too late? Her eyes began to close, and I could tell she was starting to fade. You have absolutely nothing to apologize for. I was alone for so long, I forgot what it was like to live. And then you came into my world, and... Tears began to roll down my cheeks. Having you in my life has been the best thing to ever happen to me. And I cannot wait for us to go home and live happily ever after together. Too weak to wipe away her tears, they fell onto the cold concrete blocks where we were resting on. A chill breeze blew up the side of the building and carried with it a stale smell of pavement. Stay with me, Mallory. We're going to get you help. And everything's going to be okay. We waited together on the rooftop as the sun came up, splitting open the clouds and shining on us like a spotlight. I willed the medic to get here. Fast. Faster. The wait felt like an eternity. Then far below, I heard the rumble of a vehicle pulling up, a door popping open, a distant voice. It was two weeks before Mallory and I were finally able to return to the cabin. Mallory had spent most of that time quarantined, receiving the breakthrough R. Pandavat's treatment, which carried her gently back from the brink of death. I received a preemptive treatment as well, and was monitored closely for symptoms. Finally, we were discharged. And we found our way back home where all the leaves were gold and red and the mountains had snow on their peaks. The first thing we did was check on the chickens, only to find that they had torn open their feed bag and had themselves a feast while we were away. They were very fat and very happy to see us. Aww, fat chickens. We took a careful stroll around the rest of the property too, just to make sure everything looked okay and to make note of any issues I'd need to deal with. Then, we were about ready to head inside. Near the front porch, we found a package which looked like it had been left outdoors a little too long. It must be that order I placed for drone delivery. There's a first aid kit and the aspirin and... My voice trailed off. It feels like a million years ago. Oh, that's right, we bought her a ring. I sat down on the porch step to open the package, hardly able to wait, ignoring the first aid kit and the aspirin bottle. I had pulled out a small cardboard box I knew would have Mallory's ring inside. I looked up at her, suddenly a little nervous. I have a gift for you. A gift? Really? Eee! What is it? I grinned at how cute she was. I held the box up to her, and she danced a little as she took it. She lifted the lid to peer inside. Oh my goodness! It's... it's so pretty! It reminded me of you. Her eyes looked so shiny. She smiled and leaned down to kiss me. Try it on! Okay. She took the ring out of its little box and slid it onto her narrow finger. I totally guessed her ring size, but luckily it was a perfect fit. She tilted her hand back and forth, smiling at the silver bow and glistening stone. Seeing her so happy made me happy. I love you, Mallory. I love you too. Aww. <laughs> Feels good to say that when we're not in a life or death situation, am I right? She giggled. We went inside together. And for a long while, we just enjoyed each other's company. We ate, we talked, we laughed, and we held each other. And when the sun dropped below the horizon and the sky grew dark, I thought back to what Mallory had told me about her love for the stars. What would you say if I asked you to spend this evening stargazing with me? I would say... I know the most perfect spot. I felt my grin get even bigger. I'll grab some blankets. Meet me up there? Sure. This has got to be probably my favorite CG in this game.
This is a very, very nice one. Good job, Sad Panda. Good job. A few minutes later, I climbed up onto the roof with a big blanket folded over my shoulder. Mallory sat waiting for me, watching me with those beautiful eyes and the sweetest smile. My heart felt warmer than it ever had. The pain and loss we'd experienced would always be there. But now, there was also joy to be felt. So much joy, and so much life to be lived. There would always be sorrow and endings, but like a sunset or a flower, the impermanence of this very moment was exactly what made it so valuable. I went to sit with Mallory under the stars. Oh yay! The end. There's not going to be any, like, uh, credits or anything like that. And this is what the ring looked like. That's a really pretty ring. I want one. I love both. Okay, my thoughts on the game. The art was beautiful. And the music was perfect. And I like the voice acting. And I like the, the fact that the main character was voiced. And you could have different options between if it was a female voice or a male voice. Um, my only complaint would be the text moved so slow. It was a little bothersome. I kept thinking it wasn't turned up all the way. But it was the fastest it could possibly go. And that bugged me so much. So much. But the story was really good. I did grow to like Mallory because she really did annoy me so much in the beginning of the story. Um, and but then again, the main character kind of irritated me a little. Like it was unreasonable. But the story was good, and the game was great, and the art was great. I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm definitely going to continue to play it to get all the endings and all the CGs and stuff because it does have a gallery and there's like lots of stuff to go through that I didn't even get to touch on and I would actually recommend this game to a lot of people I think Sad Panda is known for Crush Crush which isn't really a serious game and it's kind of fun to play, but it's not like a serious storyline. And so this is kind of unexpected for them. But I really enjoy it. They did a good job. Sad Panda deserves the cookies. Anyways, uh, thank you for getting to the end with me. I hope to see you in the next series. I am Tato Cat. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.